Okay guys, quick video on how to remove buttons from your Smashbox. Um, I've got a, let me set this up real quick so I can get a good angle here. Um, I got my Smashbox here, right? I'm gonna end up putting the uh, standard Sanwas back in it. I had some OBSCs with artwork um, that looked great, but to me the, uh, the button feel of the OBSCs felt a lot clunkier and um, less snappier and and so i knew that i would never end up using this box over my other one and if the buttons didn't feel as good as the other one um so i figured i might as well just suck it up and uh put the originals back in so considering there's a lack of um tutorials out there on how to remove buttons um how to do so the right way without damaging your setup I figured I'd just make a real quick video um, showcasing how to do some of this stuff. So things that you want to look out for, you don't want to damage your um, your buttons as far as the clips go. Now on the standard Sanwas, these are pretty strong and resilient. They're not going to break very often. These little clips like that you can see um, on the front of each button here like this um, that help hold it you know, in. But on the OBSCs, these clear types that you insert the artwork into, those clips can break very easily if you don't have the proper removal technique. Now, uh, I do have a technique for removal that I've pretty much removed the same button like you know eight times or something and, and it hasn't even hinted that it's going to break. So I'll teach you that real quick and you can use that if you wanna remove OBSCs and still have them for other projects. So, to do that, um, I've already swapped out the regular ones, so I'm just going to teach you how to do, um, or at least my method for you know removing buttons that I think is pretty useful. One thing you can do is label all of your buttons and where they're coming from. You know, like I have this one C down, C left, etc., 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 and that makes it easier so you don't get your wires mixed up and then you have a hell of a time trying to get it figured out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to all these buttons that I have left in here, these four OBSCs, and um, where the clip is, let's see if I can keep this on camera without blocking it, but um, where the clip is here, I've got a chopstick, right? This chopstick is um, square, as you can see, and it's flat on each side. That's important. We don't want it to be curved. We want it to be flat on each side. And first off, if you're uh, removing the actual inner portion of the button let's say because you want a different colored outside than the inside of your button or you want to insert artwork etc one of the best ways you can go about actually swapping those out since you're already using your chopsticks is that you can take one chopstick preferably a slightly larger tipped end here you're gonna tuck it in that hole like this and then you go around to the other side and now when you press up on this one right there it is it's out so that's one way that you can uh, go about doing that. But for this, we're only gonna use a single chopstick. So here's this one here. And like I said, I'm going to find where that little clasp is at, um, the little clamp, the little clip thing on the back side here. And basically, I wanna be positioned halfway on it and halfway off of it. So like halfway on the housing of the outer part of the button and halfway on that. And I wanted to press that clamp in and you see it's only gonna let me depress it far enough to where I'm flush with the outer portion of the button because I'm halfway on and halfway off. And then I'm gonna press inward here as I do it. And what I wanna see is I just wanted to press it just far enough that the button is able to sink into the um, there we go, into the side. So that button was in there pretty tight, So, uh, but most of your buttons won't require that level of uh, pressure. But basically, you just want it just enough that this side sinks in. Now you go over to the other side, right? And you're just gonna do the same thing. You depress it just far enough to where as you push lightly downwards, now this side slips in and we're going to do that for all of our buttons. So I've got four buttons here. I'm going to do that real quick on these OBSCs. There we go. That's one side. That's the other side. That's one side. 
that's the other side. And the last one, that's one side. And that's the other side. And that's four OBSCs removed. And uh, none of them broke. And uh, pretty quickly. So that's, once again, pretty good for streamlining this process, right? So now I got four buttons. They're hanging out of the holes. And we want to remove the disconnects. I found this is the best way that to remove the disconnects. Um, you will always have good leverage because you're putting your hand against the box itself. Um, you'll notice when I was removing this OBSC, it was in the hole so fucking tight that it actually was caught on the plexi in, in some way to where even after the clips were depressed, it refused to come out and I actually ended up damaging my plexi. So I'm gonna have to get a new one eventually. But for most of you, that won't be an issue. Uh, be careful if it feels like the button is actually wedged in there and will not leave even though you have the clips depressed because um, the OBSCs are not as cleanly manufactured as your standard son was so some of them are a bit wider or kind of like not exactly like perfectly circular and you'll find that when you're snapping them in place some of them don't actually want to snap down as cleanly as with the normal buttons and so that can be an issue when you're trying to remove them so be careful Similarly, when you're uh, stripping your plexi, um, like I stripped this plexi, then you also want to make sure that you have it on a uniform surface, like uniform flat surface, where when you're applying pressure, it'll be applied uniformly. Because once again, as well, uh, if you're on something that like, you know, is cushiony, then as you apply pressure, it's going to cause a warping in the plexi and where these narrow button areas are between uh, the cutouts, those have the potential to get stress cracked if um, you're applying too much pressure there as you're scrubbing. And typically, depending on the uh, percentage of the acetone in the solution, uh, the plexi may or may not need a significant amount more scrubbing. Um, I didn't have 100% solution, so um, I had to be a little more vigorous in my removal, but there was pretty much zero risk of actually damaging my plexi. So, you know, take that in consideration. But, all right, we're going to take these buttons out. So here I've got my four buttons, right? All I'm going to do is grab the button, take my quick disconnect. You want to use pliers, right? I'm going to grab it flat. So here's the flat end. And so I'm getting a nice flat grip. And what you do is you can just take the button here. You anchor your hand here against the plexi. Your other hand's anchored against the plexi. And you can use your thumb to push away from... Um, the actual pliers um, keeping the force nice and parallel to the actual clip there it is that's one and that's two right and from there you take your button you put it on nice and easy and then you can just snap it in and go to the next one so now we're going to do this one that's one, that's two. All right. Attack, attach my uh, disconnects. Snap that in. Awesome. And a couple more. But, you know, normally removing the OBSCs, um, they're a pain in the ass because literally removing them twice, you're like 80% likely to have already broken them um, as far as the little clasps are on the side that help hold the button in. However, um, this method, I've literally removed all my buttons, some of them literally like seven, eight times, and I haven't had a single one of the clasps break on any of those removals. So um, it seems to be definitely a solid way to remove them, especially because you can remove them very quickly. Like, it's not like you're being extremely tedious and painstakingly slow um, you can actually be quite fast in your removal method and um, without damaging the button which means that either you have your button available for uh, future projects or you've got you know a button that you're able to sell so there you go guys um, that is kind of how you can go about removing your buttons and also uh, 
lastly if you want to remove your plexi make sure that um, you're gonna to have to remove all the buttons because the buttons help hold the plexi on the front so at that point um, these little rivet things that are in the corners uh, you can find like two of them here two of them here one of them here one of them here etc um, those have like a little crown on them like if you look here you can see that in the middle there's a thing that's poking out and then there's a little crown that's low to the surface and if you want to remove them all you got to do is take something like uh, a screwdriver or something like a flathead and you're going to depress the bump that's in the middle and push it out through the crown out the other side and from there you can reach around to the other side and actually just lightly pull um, the entire thing out and when you insert them same thing you want to make sure that bump is not protruding through the crown you're going to place that crown uh, opening you know to the actual opening for uh, the hole that's been drilled into the frame and you're just going to press it in and then you know just snap it in place and then it'll automatically have this part just poke through and uh, you're good to go so that's it guys that's uh, Smashbox stuff in a nutshell for kind of taking it apart um, hopefully this is another resource for you guys it's useful and I'll see you in a future video peace